Number 10. The Vietnamese Bigfoot The Batatut is the Vietnamese Bigfoot, and apparently it terrorized US soldiers during the Vietnam War. There have actually been myths about this creature for decades, but it wasn't until soldiers began coming back from the war and telling stories of seeing a strange and hairy beast, over six feet tall and quite similar to the North American Bigfoot, that the legend of the Batatut really came to life. It has been sighted several times, but it has actually never been documented. The first recorded sighting was allegedly in 1918, but it was really during the Vietnam War that soldiers began spotting this thing in earnest. Apparently, the one and only sighting that has ever truly been recognized as maybe real came from six men working with the 101st Airborne Division. This all happened while the soldiers were taking a break in a mountainous jungle area. At the time, they simply thought it was an orangutan, but orangutans don't live in Vietnam. Out of the bushes, the soldiers witnessed a beast with a long head shaped kind of like a cucumber, a face completely covered in hair, very dark eyes and a huge mouth. Unlike many Bigfoot stories where the witnesses didn't actually see the creature in full, the Batatuts apparently stepped out of the vegetation and regarded the soldiers face to face. The soldiers let the creature go, they took their story home with them, and to date there has not been another sighting like it verified by so many people at once. Number 9. The Soy Island Sea Monster The Soy Island Sea Monster was spotted once in September of 1959. This occurred off the coast of Soy Island near the island of Skye in the north of Scotland. A pair of fishermen allegedly spotted a large, dark object moving towards their boat through the water. The monster was so large that the two fishermen could hear it breathing, and they could see that it had a hump on its back, a rounded head kind of like a tortoise, and a massive gash of a mouth. It was originally described as a hellish monster of prehistoric times. The two fishermen described its body as being somewhere around 10 feet long, about the size of a large donkey, but looking more like a legendary dinosaur. The sighting was so unique it actually made it into the national news media, even being reported on the illustrated London News. An artist even made their own depiction of the beast, turning it into some kind of sea dragon. But all these years later, not a single additional sighting has ever been made of the Soy Island Sea Monster, and experts have since dismissed any possibility that the sea monster ever existed off the coast of Scotland. Instead, experts claim that the two fishermen simply saw a very large sea turtle. It could have been that the fishermen had a bit too much to drink, maybe it was a little too dark on the water, and they could even have had just a bit too much imagination that day. Number 8. Sri Lankan Mermaids There is a very strange legend in Sri Lanka of a group of pygmy hominids known as Nitoeo, meaning the long clawed in the local tongue. According to the legend, these strange creatures lived in Sri Lanka all the way until the 18th century, with the very last of them residing in a small cave, where they were cornered and then set on fire by the local people, ridding the world once and for all of these ancient mermaid-like beings. However, the legend is the only proof we have of these things ever existing. There are no bones or artifacts that have ever been recovered to prove the legend, and even inside the cave where they allegedly made their last stand, there have been no remains found. A scientist from Sri Lanka is so determined to disprove the legend of the Nitoeo that he has even made a YouTube video series to debunk their existence, bringing on marine biologists and other professionals. However, many people believe the Nitoeo were real. These creatures were allegedly very similar to humans, but also very close to orangutans, covered with reddish hair, capable of climbing trees like apes, and even able to swim in the water like mermaids. And this isn't that hard to believe, especially with all the recent evidence coming out of Indonesia about the ancient hobbits that once resided on the island, but went extinct around the dawn of man. While nobody has actually seen any hairy hominids in Sri Lanka, and there's no reason why a small tribe of them couldn't be living somewhere on the island today. Number 7. The Yeti The Yeti is a creature that has definitely been seen more than once, and yet Russian researchers have recently discovered the only indisputable proof, at least according to them, that the legendary Yeti truly does exist. According to a recent report by Live Science, the researchers have just found tracks in the snow, as well as a few strands of hair, that have made them believe that the Yeti truly is out there. Of course, there are a lot of people who are sceptical about the findings. After all, the Yeti is supposedly a large, muscular beast, covered with greyish hair, weighing around 400 pounds, and basically a big, scary monkey. It's hard to believe that such a creature has managed to exist for so long without actually being spotted and documented. Even the legendary mountain climber Reinhold Messner 
who spent months traveling through the mountains of Nepal and Tibet looking for the Yeti, never once found proof of its existence, chalking up Yeti sightings to people simply seeing bears. The Yeti hairs that were found by the Russian researchers came from a snow cave in Siberia, where they also found a bed apparently used by the Yeti, as well as his footprints. Unfortunately, the hairs have not been scientifically analyzed, so there is no way to know for sure if this evidence is in fact evidence at all. Do you believe in the Yeti? Or do you think it's just a bear? Tell me your opinion in the comments below. Then, remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already. Number 6. Chinese Loch Ness Monster There is something lurking inside the famous Yangtze River in China, and it's being labelled as the Chinese Loch Ness Monster. Footage recently appeared on a popular microblog in China, depicting what appears to be a black creature with an extremely long neck slithering through the waters. The video has garnished millions of views, with many people claiming this random sighting is proof that there are other Loch Ness monsters swimming through the waters of the world, and yet some people are skeptical. Professor Wang Chung Fang from the Huazong Agricultural University dismissed the video as nothing but a hoax, saying that the creature in the water was just a water snake. However, if you really take a close look at the video, you can tell it's much larger than an ordinary snake, and definitely similar to what you would think a Loch Ness monster would look like. Some people have been quick to point out that the insane pollution of the Yangtze River could be responsible for a sea snake turning into a monster, mutating like Godzilla into a giant beast. So far, there has only been one sighting of this strange sea monster, and nobody is able to say with complete certainty if it was just a snake or really a rare sea serpent. Number 5. The Alabama White Thang The Alabama White Thang is the weirdest mythical creature that you've definitely never heard of. It may have some relation to Bigfoot, but it's not really clear. So far as the anecdotal reports go, the White Thang roams throughout Alabama, with its main stomping ground between Morgan, Etowah, and Jefferson counties. It's huge, about 8 feet in height, which makes it larger than any reported Bigfoot, and it's completely white in colour. It's the whiteness that doesn't really make sense, seeing as something so big and so pale wandering through the Alabama wilds would easily be spotted by at least someone. So far as we know, there was only one shaky report from the 1940s that detailed the white thang being properly seen. Someone allegedly saw the beast running like a jaguar through the woods, shrieking like the legendary Wendigo. Still, whenever folks in the backwoods of Alabama hear shrieking in the night, they chalk it up to the white thang rampaging through the forest. Number 4. Ireland's Dobar Chu The Dobar Chu is one of the scariest creatures from Irish folklore. It's basically the equivalent of Scotland's Loch Ness Monster only it's a bit different in that there are supposed to be a lot of them. Dobar Chu is said to live in many lakes all throughout the British Isles, and they've been seen there since the days of the ancient Celts. The name Dobar Chu actually translates to water hound, with some people referring to them as Irish crocodiles. These beasts are thirsty for blood, they have a proclivity for human flesh, and they even seek revenge when one of their own is killed. But of course, they have never been scientifically documented, and are considered unrecognised by scientific professionals. The only proof of the Dobar Chu's existence comes from Glenade, in the northwest of Ireland, where sightings originated back in 1684. A single recorded sighting took place in 1896, when a woman named Miss Walkington saw a half-wolf, half-fish creature swimming in the lake and described it to the Journal of Royal Society of Antiquaries of Ireland. To this date, there has never been another semi-verified report of an actual Dobar Chu being seen. Number 3. Tasmanian Tiger the Tasmanian tiger is a large carnivore with stripes that supposedly went extinct at least 80 years ago. However, newly released documents from the Australian government have shown that sightings have been reported as recently as 2019, leading people to wonder whether the Tasmanian tiger truly went extinct or not. According to Tasmania's Department of Primary Industries, there was not just one sighting of this animal, but at least eight in just the last three years. The scientific name for the Tasmanian tiger is the thylacine, and it's a strange marsupial that looks like a weird mixture of a wolf, fox, and large cat. The very last Tasmanian tiger living in captivity died in 1936, and not a single one has been documented since. All we have right now are unverified reports of sightings by civilians. Specifically, there is one very reliable report that came when a Tasmanian tiger allegedly walked out into the road in front of a couple's car, and they had at least 15 seconds to clearly look at the animal. According to both people in the car, they 100% saw a thylacine. This sighting is more legitimate than others, because it was made by two people who had absolutely no reason to lie about it. 
Either the Tasmanian tiger is simply living in the memories of the people of Tasmania, or there are a few of them still hiding in the wild, smart enough to stay away from humans. As for why they went extinct in the first place, the most likely reason is that the European colonists killed thousands of them because they would eat sheep. Number 2. The Japanese Kappa The Japanese Kappa is one of the strangest animals on the list today, and it may or may not exist. The Kappa has its origins in Japanese folklore. These creatures are about the size of a child, they have reptilian skin that ranges in colour from yellow to blue to green, and they have faces like apes with a head of thin green hair. They allegedly live in the ponds and rivers throughout Japan, some reports claim they even have webbed hands and feet, and everyone agrees that they smell like fish. But perhaps the most notable feature of the kappa is the indentation at the top of its head, which is regarded as the mythical source of its power. The Japanese claim that the kappa is able to be polite, but is still known as a troublemaker. They don't usually attack humans, but they will pull all kinds of pranks, and for whatever reason, they apparently love cucumbers. If you ever get on the kappa's bad side, it will drown you, kidnap your children, or even pull your intestines out. Of course, this is completely absurd, and these creatures very likely don't exist. One of the most logical explanations for the legend of the kappa is the giant Japanese salamander, which lives throughout the streams of Japan. It's a prehistoric kind of amphibian, and could very well be the source of this Japanese legend. So far as sightings go, the only evidence comes from mummified remains found in a riverbank back in 1818. However, the strange looking remains have never been verified as belonging to a mythical creature. Number 1. Monster Crocodile It's always strange when paleontologists find a single set of bones of a new species, as it really makes you wonder where all the other evidence is of that particular animal. That's exactly what happened when a skull was excavated in Morocco, unlike any other seen before. The skull apparently belonged to a previously unknown species of prehistoric crocodile, with a shield for a skull. This croc would have looked much different than any crocodile you can see on Earth today. According to a professor of anatomical sciences at the University of Missouri, the crocodile probably had a head that was six feet long, with a shield-like structure at the very top of its skull, kind of like what you would find on a triceratops. This new monster is being referred to as the shield croc. It lived 100 million years ago, and is the first of its kinds to have ever been discovered. Of course, it's never been sighted as a living animal, but there is so far only one skull known on the entire planet. The shield croc would have been around 36 feet in length, and one of the deadliest animals of its time. Number 10. Desert Locusts The Biblical Plague of Locusts is actually here. As if we didn't have enough already! Farmers in Embu County, Kenya are currently under siege by an invasion of crop-destroying desert locusts, who are storming in from nearby Kitui County, throwing residents into a panic. It's the second wave of locusts to appear in recent times, eating the subsistence crops that locals depend heavily on to survive. They are currently appealing to the government for help eradicating the ruthless insects, which is urgently needed to avoid outright famine. Authorities in Kenya and other countries have been fighting a war on locusts ever since the creatures began infesting parts of East Africa en masse in 2019. Locusts travel up to 90 miles daily in massive swarms and are extremely difficult to control. They ultimately invaded nine countries following an unusually wet rainy season, which produced prime conditions for reproducing. Some of these places, including Kenya, have not seen locusts in 70 years, according to the fizz.org, and their infrastructures were not prepared to respond effectively to the crisis. Now that the second wave has arrived, better management methods are being developed, but the affected countries still have a tough road ahead of them when it comes to fully defeating invasive desert locusts. Millions of people will face disruptions to their food supplies, and nobody knows for sure when the invasion will end. Number 9. Nara Deer as the novel coronavirus grips the planet, spreading like wildfire from one country to another early last year, things changed in ways we never imagined would happen during our lifetimes. Tourism and travel ground to an abrupt halt, as people the world over were ordered to stop going to work and stay in their homes. Consequently, nature began to reclaim urban spaces, and wild animals began appearing in places where they are not typically seen. Before the pandemic hit, it actually wasn't too unusual to encounter deer in certain parts of Nara, Japan, particularly in Nara Deer Park, where over 1,000 deer are known to reside. While they are technically considered wild, the animals have long relied primarily on tourists for food. They are not caged, and they freely come and go from the park and wander the city as they please. Once COVID-19 took hold and life in lockdown began, deer began leaving Nara Park in droves. 
With no tourists around to feed them, they were forced to leave their natural habitat and venture deep into the city in search of food. Locals witnessed the animals in unusual places, like train stations and in various places throughout the city feeding on grass. While this wasn't the first time large numbers of deer roamed into the city, the uncertainty brought on by the coronavirus poses concerns for future management of the population. Number 8. Snake at the Door San Antonio resident Jose Perez encountered an unexpected surprise one June afternoon last year when he opened the door to his home to let his dog outside and found a huge rat snake coiled around the doorknob on the other side. The four foot long reptile alarmed Perez at first glance, but upon taking a closer look, he realized that it was a non-venomous species. The snake luckily picked the right house. I was surprised but not scared because I knew she wasn't going to hurt me, Perez told my San Antonio. I believed she wanted to go near the bird's nest I have on my porch. The homeowner poked the snake with a long pole, causing it to slither away into the bushes without incident. Perez said he didn't mind if the creature decided to visit again. What a nice guy. Herpetologist Paul Crump from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department confirmed with My San Antonio that Western Texas rat snakes are harmless to humans, despite their tendency to scare people based on looks alone. But not all animals are safe from these reptiles, which grow up to six feet long and are commonly seen around people's homes in both urban and rural areas due to their tendency to feed on birds, small mammals, and chicken eggs. That aside, there's a good reason not to harm Western Texas rat snakes, according to Crump, who said, they are extremely beneficial to our ecosystem, and if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. What animal would scare you the most if you found it in your house? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more animal videos. Number seven, seagulls. Australia is known for its unique, and oftentimes terrifying, wildlife, so it's no surprise that animals occasionally interrupt human activities there. Recently, during the Australia Open's Phillip Island Trophy match at Melbourne Stadium, a flock of low-flying seagulls repeatedly swooped into the court and disrupted a match between players Bianca Andreescu and Madison Brengel. One bird even robbed Andreescu of an ace when it flew at her, interrupting her delivery. While the players chased the seagulls off the field, workers were tasked with cleaning the droppings that they left behind, which presented a slipping hazard. The presence of seagulls at the Australian Open is nothing new, given their affinity for dumpster scraps. But there was no crowd this year due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and the birds not only showed up anyway, they took the opportunity to explore parts of the stadium they normally steer clear of. Nevertheless, the game continued, with Andreescu nabbing a victory. Number 6. Marbled Crayfish This might be the weirdest. In 2005, an unusual freshwater crayfish species began appearing in rice paddies in Madagascar. It was unlike anything farmers had ever seen before and spread quickly throughout the country. A decade later, German researchers determined that the species evolved over the last 30 years or so. Earlier this year, a Monga Bay article described these creatures, known as marbled crayfish, or Procambarus virginalis, which emerged into existence when German aquarium breeders somehow produced the mutated all-female species. They reproduce by cloning, entirely without males. This is an incredibly rare trait to begin with, but it's hardly ever the only way a species reproduces. One generation of marbled crayfish is genetically identical to the next. These creatures are highly adaptable, and they grow fast. Its presence in Madagascar could threaten the island's nation's unique and fragile ecosystem, which consists of animals seen nowhere else on Earth. But locals have come to rely on the marbled crayfish as an abundant source of protein, posing complicated questions regarding how to manage the population. Some fishermen blame the species for their decreasing catches, while some rice farmers believe the marbled crayfish is destroying their paddies. But researchers know very little about its effect on the environment, and they are currently working to better understand the species' ecological impact. Number 5. Sheep Last May, a video of dozens of sheep taking over the streets of Samson, Turkey, went viral, serving as one of many examples of how wildlife made its way back into highly populated areas where the streets went quiet amid quarantine orders. The flock of over 100 sheep invaded the city, located on the country's northern coast, via an empty highway at night after the local curfew took effect. While the animals seemed fairly relaxed in this unfamiliar territory, residents were alarmed. Seda Sezjin, who filmed a viral video of the sheep, told CNN, When I went to bed to sleep, I heard voices approaching. I couldn't make sense of it at first, and I was scared because there was a curfew. Sezjin went on to say that she was utterly shocked to see the animals in the middle of the city on its busiest street and that she even thought she was dreaming at first. 
Just a few weeks earlier, sheep had appeared at a McDonald's in the town of Ebu Vale in South Wales. They weren't there for value meals, as the restaurant was closed, but were happily munching on the property's grass. Local resident Andrew Thomas, who took the viral photo and posted it on social media, told CNN it's actually fairly common to see sheep roaming through Ebu Vale, but that he saw their presence at McDonald's as an opportunity to joke about how even the animals were experiencing fast food withdrawal. Number 4. Feral Pigs NBC News reported late last year that Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs are overrunning Puerto Rico by the thousands, invading people's gardens and garbage cans and leaving their waste behind. Roughly five years ago, residents began buying the species as pets. Following Hurricane Maria in 2017, some of the pot-bellied pigs, who can reach up to 250 pounds, broke out of their enclosures. They reproduced rapidly, leading to the ongoing crisis that caused the Puerto Rican government to declare an emergency in 2019 so they could obtain federal assistance managing the population. The invasive species is difficult to control. Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs reproduce rapidly and they are known to carry diseases so they can't be killed for food. A few years ago, crews came in and killed around 500 of the animals, but this barely put a dent in the problem. Officials are trying to come up with a new way to grapple with the pigs, which have been spotted in 67 of Puerto Rico's 78 municipalities. While these animals pose problems in some parts of the mainland US and other countries, their overpopulation is particularly out of control on the island. Besides overturning locals' garbage cans and eating their freshly grown produce, the pigs pose a safety hazard, sometimes becoming aggressive with residents. They also make tons of noise, making it difficult for people to live and sleep peacefully. Scientists are studying the best ways to eradicate the pigs, but have acknowledged that doing so could take several years. Their hope is to trap the animals and humanely euthanize them, although this proposal is receiving rampant backlash from animal rights groups who want to see the pigs rehomed to a sanctuary. Number 3. LA Animal Shelter Rats Dog and cat adoption rates rose dramatically in many parts of the world during the worst of the coronavirus lockdowns, as people who were holed up at home longed for companionship amid the absence of face-to-face -face human interaction. In many ways, this is great news, but animal shelters are facing their own unique challenges during these unforeseen times. When the strictest measures were in place, many rescues were understaffed, leaving animals to languish with inadequate nourishment, veterinary care and socialization. Moreover, these facilities sometimes became under-maintained, leaving them vulnerable to pests and other damage. Such was the case in Los Angeles, where Los Angeles Animal Services General Manager Brenda Barnett proudly announced the clearing out of the city's animal shelters due to increased adoptions while reportedly silently battling a war against rats at these establishments. Writing for City Watch LA late last year, Phyllis M. Doherty alleged that rats had more or less taken over animal rescues throughout LA, where she said officials were having a difficult time eradicating the animals without breaking one of California's strict laws revolving around the matter. Moreover, Doherty asserted that shelters' no-kill policies might be compelling their staff to figure out a non-lethal way to get the invasive rat populations under control. Records obtained through the California Privacy Rights Act reveal that those involved in trying to conquer the rats entertained the prospects of both poison and oral birth control for female rats, but officials seem to be struggling to agree to a plan as the problem lingers or perhaps even grows. Number 2. Argentine Tegus Florida is infamous for its invasion of animal populations, which include Burmese pythons, iguanas, lionfish, Cuban tree frogs, cane toads and more. The Argentine black and white tegu is the latest species to join this seemingly ever-expanding list. Growing up to 4 feet long, these large lizards have an established invasive presence in South Florida and are rapidly spreading to other parts of the southeastern United States. The species, native to South America, feasts on a wide variety of plants and animals, posing a major threat to farms, local ecosystems and endangered endemic species. These reptiles especially enjoy eggs, putting vulnerable marine creatures at risk. Tegus first established a wild breeding population in Florida over a decade ago after a captive pet either escaped or was released, but they recently spread to parts of Georgia and South Carolina, according to National Geographic. The creatures have also been reported in Alabama, Texas and Louisiana. One or two tegus making their way into the wild would not necessarily result in a breeding population, but what's happened now is the result of this happening too often. US Geological Survey biologist Amy Yackel Adams explained to Nat Geo that the climate in the southeastern United States is suitable for tegus, putting the entire region at risk. As climate change progresses, this area may grow. Number 1. Monkeys 
In 2018, young capuchin monkeys made their way into the streets of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil from the surrounding hills. They terrorized residents of the city's southern zone, breaking into their homes to steal fruit and other food. They come in, make a mess, break and throw everything onto the floor, tree hugger reported one resident as saying. One investigation reportedly showed that the monkeys are organized in their attack methods, with one making a mock bird call to alert others that a home invasion is about to begin. Primatologist Christiane Rangel told reporters that these young monkeys are much like human youths in their tendency to be bolder and more fearless than adults. It's normal to see monkeys in the streets now and then, considering the area is located next to Tijuca Park, the world's largest urban forest. But it's unusual for the creatures to arrive in droves and carry out calculated home invasions and raids. It's possible that by feeding the monkeys, residents made them feel comfortable with, or perhaps even tempted by the prospect of taking food from humans, especially when facing seasonal food insecurity. As of 2018, the problem seemed to be growing. This has happened elsewhere. Earlier this year, over 3,000 macaques stormed through two villages in Thailand's Rasi Salai district. They came in packs of up to 200 and burst into homes in search of food, entering through doors, windows, and even roofs. While macaques have a long-standing presence in the area, their numbers have risen dramatically in recent years, the Bangkok Post reported. Meanwhile, their food supply was depleted, driving them to invade houses and even monasteries. Locals did not want to see the macaques killed off, but for their population to be controlled so that humans and animals could cohabitate more peacefully alongside one another. Number 10. Black and Yellow No-No Are you afraid of snakes? There are actually many snakes that are completely harmless, but we won't be talking about those ones in this video. You're here for the dangerous ones, and when it comes to dangerous snakes that you should never touch, the coral snake is definitely one of them. The coral snake has red and black stripes separated by yellow bands, but there's the scarlet king snake, which by the way is completely harmless, and it has red and yellow stripes separated by black bands. Basically, both snakes look almost identical with the same three colours. This can be pretty confusing. Although, I should say for the record that if you see any kind of snake, whether it's red or pink or blue, you probably don't want to try and pet it. There are many different species of coral snakes out there, and each one is venomous. The general rule is that if you see a colourful snake in the wild, run and don't look back. But if, for whatever reason, you can't resist the urge to pet or hold a snake, remember this rhyme. Red touches yellow, it kills a fellow. Red touches black, safer for Jack. Number 9. Decapitated Danger Believe it or not, just because a snake is dead doesn't mean it can't kill you. Sometimes, snakes bite back from the grave. Take the recent story reported by CNN, in which a man almost died after a severed snake head bit him and filled his blood with poison. This happened in Texas, after a man was helping his wife do some yard work. They both came across the deadly rattlesnake, the man picked up a shovel and he separated the snake's head from its body and he thought that would be the end of the story. But when the man reached to pick up the severed head and dispose of it, the snake head sunk its fangs into his fingers. Apparently, this snake had some pretty good post-death reflexes. According to Dr. Keith Boson, snakes have a very similar reflex mechanism to that of chickens that are still able to run around with their heads cut off. However, the thing here is that snakes are unable to control the amount of venom which they inject because their brain capacity has been greatly diminished, you know, from being decapitated. All the creature is able to do is sink its teeth in and let nature do the rest. In the case of this Texas man, he was forced into a coma for five days. His kidneys failed, he went on a dialysis machine, he needed antibiotics, and it would be days before he eventually made a recovery, though not before getting his left index finger amputated. Number 8. Snake in the Lake A popular lake near the city of Dusseldorf in Germany was recently restricted when an unwelcome guest began to terrorise local citizens. The unwelcome guest was a giant yellow anaconda. And even though this type of snake isn't venomous, it's still able to strangle prey much larger than itself. What makes the snake even more horrifying is that it was much bigger than any other snakes in the area. It was about 8 feet in length. Nobody knows how the snake got there, and luckily no one was injured, but visitors to the lake definitely had to clear out of there. Especially families with small children. There have been several incidences where humans were swallowed whole by large snakes, and we don't want to add any more names to that list. But wait, aren't anacondas native to South America? Yes, yes they are. They are not designed to live in the cold weather of Germany. 
So far as the theory goes, the anaconda probably round up in the lake because someone had it as a pet, the snake grew too big to handle, and they simply dumped it in the lake to get rid of it. Not cool. Hey, before we continue, I just wanted to say thanks for checking out the channel. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, give this video a like. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 7. Monster Anaconda The last place you expect to find a deadly snake is at your job, unless your job is a South American tour guide. And that's exactly what happened in Brazil. Except they weren't tour guides, they were construction workers. The terrified builders were working on a dam and came upon a giant anaconda lurking in the nearby caves. This anaconda was dramatically larger than the one we just talked about in Germany, estimated to be over 33 feet in length. Apparently, the workers had been carrying out a controlled explosion inside the cave where the beast was living when it slithered out and surprised them. Video footage showed the workers chaining the anaconda to a crane and picking the animal up using their heavy machinery. Rather than letting the snake go on living, the builders reportedly killed it and took photos with it. This is obviously horrible, and yet even more horrible would have been if the giant snake got loose, slithered into a nearby town, and ate a couple of children. But of course, killing the snake was definitely not the solution. Whatever you do, if you see a massive anaconda on your next journey into the Amazon, best to not touch it. Number 6. Python in a Blanket Our next story is every parent's worst nightmare. A giant 7-foot carpet python was recently discovered curled up on a warm electric blanket that had been placed inside of a child's bed in Queensland, Australia. The entire incident was caught on video. While it's definitely a bad idea to touch a massive snake that slithered into your house, this is one of those times where you might not have a choice. The snake was obviously drawn to the child's cosy bed because of the heat being emitted from the electric blanket, and thankfully the parents spotted the snake before putting the child down to sleep. If they hadn't, the parents would have ended up placing their child directly into the jaws of a ferocious predator. As you can imagine, the parents were pretty freaked out. They quickly called in a snake catcher, who came and dealt with the situation. These types of pythons are fairly common in Australia, and even though they aren't venomous, they can use their powers of strangulation to kill children and adults alike. If you live in Australia, do you check your blankets and under your bed frequently for snakes? I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Engine Troubles Speaking of snakes in weird places, a driver in the south of Florida recently got a big surprise when he checked under the hood of his prized Ford Mustang and found a giant python staring back at him with its teeth showing. It was ready to strike. It was a Burmese python, much larger than the one we just talked about from Australia. It was about 10 feet in length and strong enough to strangle a grown man to death. The driver was so freaked out that he called officers with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, who actually came and removed the reptile for him. Unlike some people, this guy had a pretty good sense of self-preservation and knew better than to reach into his engine and try to pull the snake out himself. Number 4. The Deadly Cottonmouth Our next story also takes us to the Sunshine State of Florida. A 19-year-old kid named Zamar Miller said his life flashed before his very eyes after being hit on the foot by one of the most venomous snakes in the world. This is the venomous cottonmouth snake. The bite from this snake is so toxic, it can kill a fully grown man in just a matter of hours. According to the report from Fox News, the snake nibbled Miller's foot, his leg erupted in throbbing pain, and paramedics were called to the scene to rescue his life. If not for the paramedics arriving with the correct anti-venom, Zamar could very easily not be alive today. When he was released from the hospital later that very night, he had to use a walker because his foot was so swollen that he could not walk on it. Ouch! Of course, you should absolutely never put your foot anywhere near a cottonmouth snake, as this is what will usually happen. Never ever touch a snake that you find in Florida. In Zamar's case, he obviously didn't know the snake was there. It happened just outside his house, as he was walking towards his own door, the snake lunged out of nowhere and bit him on the foot. It took four specialised officers to find the snake at his home and remove it from the property. It had made itself comfortable living underneath a garden hose cabinet reel. Number 3. Great Big Snakes People in the United States are generally fearful of the cottonmouth snakes, rattlesnakes and even copperheads. There are too many horrifying incidents that have happened. But the biggest indigenous snake in North America is actually the Eastern Indigo, as it can grow up to 9 feet in length. It is an extremely intimidating creature, completely black and very mean. They primarily live in Georgia, Alabama, Florida and Mississippi, 
but according to the Georgia Department of Nature Resources, they have been vanishing from the wild at an extraordinary rate. The Georgia Wildlife Conservation Section is even making an effort to track down and survey the remaining indigo snakes to try and find out just what their population looks like right now. These snakes are considered federally endangered in both Georgia and Florida because of habitat loss, and this means that if you see one in the wild, you definitely shouldn't touch it, and certainly don't kill it. If you come across an eastern indigo snake, just leave it alone. Turn the other cheek. Unless, of course, the snake tries to bite that cheek off. But these snakes aren't venomous, they don't typically bite humans, and they're not nearly big enough to kill anything other than your pets, and maybe your kids. So yeah, still scary and you still don't want to touch it. Number 2. Black Mamba at the Party The legendary Black Mamba is one of the most infamous snakes in the world, believed to be responsible for the most snake-related deaths in all of Africa. A woman named Chepozite Adomo was a lucky survivor of a Black Mamba attack. She had been walking home from a party late at night when a six and a half foot black mamba slithered in front of her path, coiled around her ankles, and sunk its teeth into her. She screamed and pulled at the snake, trying to get it off her leg, but it simply struck her again and again. What's even more horrifying is that two additional mambas slithered over to help out their buddy. If not for a man who heard her screams and came running with a machete, she likely would have been bitten to death. The man quickly cut the black mambas into pieces, but the woman was already in horrifying pain and losing her vision. What's really tragic about this story is that since the woman was living in a remote part of Kenya, it was at least 45 minutes to the nearest hospital. Luckily, she managed to survive the drive and be injected with the proper antivenom. Her life was saved, but hers was a lucky case. There are anecdotal reports that say the bite of a black mamba will almost always kill its victims within just 40 minutes. You definitely don't want to touch this snake. Number 1. One Million Dead We've talked about a lot of different snakes today. We've also talked about a lot of different places on Earth where you should never touch a snake. But out of all the countries in the world, the one you need to be the most careful about when it comes to dangerous snakes is definitely India. According to a recent 2020 report from the BBC, it's been estimated that 1.2 million people have died from snake bites in India in the last two decades. Half the victims were between around 30 and 70 years old, with a quarter of them being children. So, which horrifying serpents are responsible for so much death? Drum roll please! The answer is three different snakes actually. The Cobra, the Russell's Viper, and the Deadly Crate. Together, these three types of venomous snakes are responsible for mass amounts of death, with the Indian Cobra killing the most people each and every year. But these aren't the only serpents you need to be careful of. There are at least 12 other species of snakes found throughout India that are also responsible for annual deaths, with over half the deaths occurring during the monsoon season, when snakes come out in droves and begin biting people on the legs. The lesson here is that if you take a trip to India, you better watch your ankles. And let me just remind you one more time, don't touch dangerous snakes. Thanks for watching. Have you ever handled a dangerous snake before? If so, let me know about the experience in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!